Welcome to Forum Bath. I'm Jonathan Oates. We are here with Dr. Theo Papadopoulos in the Department of Social and Policy Sciences at the University of Bath to discuss the situation in Greece. Dr. Papadopoulos is lecturer in social policy at the University of Bath. He was born in Greece in Athens before coming to the UK in 1990. Can we start by saying something about the nature of Greek politics by way of background? Um, how far back do we need to go? Yeah. Where would you start? I would actually start um, uh, after, the, after the Second World War, the period after the Second World War. This is probably more fruitful you know, mm. to understand the modern Greek politics. The society that emerges after the end of the um, occupation of Greece is um, a society that is, um, has experienced the horrors of a, of a tremendous occupation from um, uh, the, under the Nazis, where where you have hundreds of thousands of victims, um, and a very strong resistance movement, that is, however, um, led by uh, left part uh, left left parties, and especially the Communist Party of Greece. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, you have the um, what we can call the more nationalist, uh, pro-monarchy uh, elements of the uh, regime that uh, are interested in restoring the monarchy uh, back. To cut the long story short, what happens during that dynamic, uh, to some extent with the British involvement uh, that has um, uh, certainly supported the uh, restoration of monarchy, was the, uh, the, the civil war that takes place between 46 to 49. After that civil war, that when after the, the defeat, the, effectively the defeat, the, the defeat of the left, what we have is large parts of the Greek left that have been uh, delegitimized, they have been um, basically made illegal. Mm. Uh, thousands of people are, are ending up in exiles, they, they are fleeing in uh, East Bloc countries, and whoever remains in Greece that is a left winger is basically ostracized, considered a traitor, uh, not, not a patriot. And the left is, um, in that respect, you know. Became, comes under the shadow of a very authoritarian mm. regime. So it goes underground. It goes underground, exactly. Mm. Certainly mm. the Communist Party of Greece goes underground. Um, members of the Communist Party have been executed in the, even in the middle of the 50s for, on, the, on the grounds of treason. Um, gradually, as we move towards the 60s, uh, the regime seems to try to kind of go back to some degree of um, normality, democratization, uh, there's a party of the center which is uh, led by a charismatic, um, the first of the charismatic leaders of the Papandreou family. His name is George Papandreou. Mm -hmm. And he has uh, a relatively anti monarchist stan stance. He's a party of the center uh, against a more um, nationalist, if you like, party, mm. conservative party. And this is nom nominally a democracy? It's nominally a democracy, yeah, mm. with a lot of um, in involvement and, uh, of, the, of the monarchy in uh, even rigging elections and mm. <laughs> helping uh, the unruly Greeks to decide the, the right way mm. in the elections and all that. Um, in 1967, um, if about a month before the, the, the formal elections are to take place, where everybody expects that the party of the center, led by Papandreou, is going to win, mm -hmm. we have the coup d'etat, mm -hmm. where the colonels um, enter the, the, the scene of the politics in Greece. They um, uh, basically send their tanks and, uh, in the parliament and control the rest of Athens. During the time of the dictatorship, um, the the king is has a very um, tense relationship with the with the colonels. Um, originally, he gives some some support, or at least it doesn't um, go um, outright to, against them. Mm. Uh, but gradually, he finds himself I isolated, and eventually he flees the country. And during the dictatorship, the uh, dictators they actually do a referendum where the um, monarchy is nominally abolished. In Greece, mm. however, this was done under dictatorship rule. Now mm. we, we 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 put the let's let's put the clock a little bit further forward. In 1973, we have a very um, important moment that uh, is uh, um, signifies signals, if you like, a, a, a massive change mm. in the uh, modern Greek politics. 
uh, that particular date is, uh, we can even specify the date for that, is the, the 17th of November 1973, when um, uh, an occupation of uh, one of the uh, Athens universities called the Athens Polytechnic has been crushed with uh, tanks and uh, army sent by the colonels. Now, this occupation was very important because this was an occupation uh, massively led by the left uh, parties mm -hmm. uh, that existed under, underground, as I said, at the time. And it's the time when, to some extent, the Greek left re-legitimized itself in the eyes of the, of the wider society. This is the, the moment where, let's say, left-wingers, uh, students and workers and others uh, die uh, for um, democracy. Mm. Um, and to some extent, why this is so important is because, you know, why, why it's so important is, is that this is the key moment where um, everybody realized that the politics after the dictatorship were not going to be the same. So following the, the Cyprus uh, uh, crisis and disaster that uh, the Greek colonists were directly implicated uh, and involved, um, what we have is a, a restoration of uh, democratic rule, the, third, the beginnings of the Third Republic that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And this is the moment where left is legitimized again, the Communist Party becomes legal, and there is a lot of uh, the, 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 patri the, 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 the slogans about the, uh, uh, the country and democracy and all that become part of the left vocabulary, if you like. Mm -hmm. um, the other pivotal moment during the period now of the Third Republic is the uh, October 1981, when for the first time uh, in modern Greek history, certainly post-war Greek history, we have uh, uh, elections that um, are fair and free. And uh, the PASOK, the Socialist Party of uh, Greece, the Social Democratic Party, led by the son of the the second of the Papandreou dynasty, mm -hmm. uh, comes into power with um, a lot of the slogans and the rhetoric of the left. So PASOK, in that respect, uh, manages to create the, a new consensus, if you like, in Greek politics, uh, with emphasis, a lot of emphasis on the importance of the state sector, redistribution, social policy, um, things that they were only, only dreams for generations of Greeks mm. uh, in previous decades. But this was quite a centrist party. It used some of the rhetoric of the of the old left, but its policies were not necessarily the poli the politics the policies were mixed in the in terms of the foreign policy. For instance, it was um, a, a very ra radical uh, uh, socialist uh, at the time. Uh, Papandreou was uh, considered a bit of a, a maverick in the international scene. He was. Uh, very much supportive of Palestinians, for instance. He met with uh, Daniel Ortega of the Sandinistas. Mm -hmm. He was, um, um, he, uh, Greece put a veto against uh, sanctions against Poland at the time that was um, uh, crushing the solidarity um, um, movement. So it was, uh, it was not exactly, you know, at, le at least outside Greece was not, uh, uh, it was definitely not a centrist. Mm. <laughs> um, inside Greece, the, 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 it was, it was um, the politics uh, and the policies that, uh, that um, he was um, uh, doing, um, pursuing was actually mixed. Mm. In terms of its um, policies, economic policy, for example, we can again uh, separate two, we have two phases, if you like, in the PASOK administration. One is the first period where there is um, a massive redistribution. They have a, a serious increases in um, uh, minimum wages, the beginnings of uh, you know very big um, uh, legislative changes in terms of family law and uh, equality of genders, uh, sexes, and um, uh, a lot of uh, redistribution towards the provinces, you know, provincial uh, places outside Athens and all that. However, a lot of this is um, funded by, not by increased taxation of the rich. Um, Papandreou, despite his socialist um, um, rhetoric, he never touched really seriously the, uh, the Greek uh, elite uh, mm. in terms of taxation. Instead, what he did was actually he, he started borrowing a lot of money. And by 1985, um, uh, clearly, the economy was not doing very well. This is external debt. External, yeah, the, the, mm. the debt was exactly was it was mm. borrowing lending, borrowing money from mm. abroad. 
And from 1985 onwards, we can identify a second period, if like, in the economic policy, where you know the first austerity measures start uh, getting implemented, um, and the scene in the scene enters uh, uh, another character that we will see later. His name is Kostas Simitis, who is a mm -hmm. minister of finance uh, at the time. And the Papandreou regime ends. Um, uh, at least that that period of it ends in 1989-90, with um, the um, a series of elections where you know the Pasoko party is ousted. Um, there are trials where you know um, there are a lot of um, uh, accusations about scandals and economic mismanagement and all that. And, mm -hmm. and Papandreou was found not guilty, but everybody knew that something fishy was going on. Uh, certainly among some of his top uh, people. Mm. Then um, the Greek politics to some extent still oscillate um, uh, uh, between the, what, uh, what we can you know, understand in other Western uh, countries to, to be a, a bi-party system. You mm. know? So we have a conservative party that is committed to democracy, mm. is committed that, to Europe. Is that That's new, the new, new yeah. democracy. It's mm. called the new democracy, uh, formed in 1974. Yeah. So this party um, gets um, um, into government in the early 90s. Then uh, we have uh, a change where we have Papandreou again entering the scene, but he's very frail and he's health uh, is, is not very good, and mm. he's replaced by Kostas uh, Simitis. And then we have the return of PASOK again in government to prepare the country to um, uh, for for um, uh, entering the um, Euro, mm. uh, which is um, um, again at the heart of the understanding the Greek crisis. Yes, of course. Um, what, what was the feeling? Um, or put it this way, what what was the public presentation of the case for Euro entry and what might have been going on underneath? The, it was very um, interesting to be in Greece at the time because um, I, I, um, I, I was following the, um, a little bit from a distance, a little bit, you know, what what was happening, but also being in, in Greece during the period that the, the, the country was prepare, preparing for the entering the Euro. And the way the Semitism regime that the Semitism uh, administration uh, sold it, sold the Europe mm. to the public, was that this was going to be uh, the vehicle for, for Greece becoming, as they used to call it, uh, um, a member of the club of the strong in Europe. Uh, the idea was that it will, the, the Euro will create the necessary macroeconomic and, and fiscal framework within which then Greece would pursue the necessary reforms mm -hmm. to become a competitive, modernized uh, economy. Um, unfortunately, that was not what uh, happened in, in reality, but certainly it was sold to the public like that. It was sold as mm. the ticket to prosperity, ticket to a modern country, uh, moving away from um, uh, the old experiments with, um, you know, the old type of socialism mm. of Papandreou, let's say, and moving on into and a more modern it, European... Was it a popular perception? Um, I would say yes. I would say it was uh, it was it was um, certainly um, the perception that was uh, shared by both the conservative voters and the PASOK, mm. uh, most of the PASOK voters. Uh, the left at the time um, was, um, uh, apart from the Communist Party that was anti-Euro, the the other parts of the left, that they were quite small anyway, they had they were a little bit ambivalent. Some of them they were. Uh, I suppose they were critically in favor, others they were just only, only in terms of rhetoric uh, against, but mm. they didn't mind. I, mean, I don't think anyone at the time could, um, um, from, from, from the left, could uh, predict the scale, if you like, of, uh, uh, of uh, and the magnitude of, of, of the impact that this decision uh, would have.